Um, I'd like to thank the ICS Scientific Committee for the opportunity to present this work, which is part of my uh, postdoc, and uh, to acknowledge my colleagues and Deakin University. And uh, that's my disclosure. The high rates of urinary and fecal incontinence and the quality of continence care broadly is an issue that concerns many of us, particularly as our population is aging and at a personal level many of us are finding ourselves in situations where we have increasingly dependent older people to care for, and some of whom require more skilled care in long-term care. Prior research has drawn attention to deficits in the assessment and prevention of incontinence and the limited use of therapeutic interventions to optimise continence. For example, Schnelli and others have demonstrated low rates of toileting assistance, rates that are too low to optimise continence. Whilst we know many people living in long-term care have underlying age-related changes that may cause or contribute to urinary incontinence and faecal incontinence, as well as multiple comorbidities, some factors we know may respond to medical, nursing or allied health intervention. And we use the mnemonic DIPPERS to refer to these factors. In a systematic review on the prevalence and risk factors for incontinence in long-term care, Offerman's et al. also identified processes of care in long-term care as a risk factor for incontinence. And here the researchers were talking about things like the use of restraint and um, mobility aids that limit access uh, and uh, functional um, abilities. There have been a number of systematic efforts undertaken to improve or reduce rather rates of incontinence in long-term care. And these include education to staff, uh, the development of assessment resources, guidelines, models of care um, that aim to alter how care is provided such as through supervision and the use of clinical leaders and or nurses with advanced, advanced knowledge and skill, such as nurse practitioners. In some countries, efforts to improve the quality of continence care in long-term care facilities has also resulted in quality indicators, that are, and these are often linked to standards of care and accreditation frameworks and funding. In Australia, the in Australia, the standard of care for continence simply states that residents' continence care will be effective. It leaves it up to the facilities to decide what effective continence care is. Um, in other countries, we have um, uh, quality indicators for care that measure structure and processes of care, such as the percent of residents with a comprehensive continence assessment completed on admission or the availability of a stock of continence supplies. Other quality measures include uh, look at outcomes of continence care, such as the percent of low-risk residents who lose control of their bladder or bowel, or the percent of residents with a UTI. But the question that we posed was whether or not these, these quality indicators um, accurately reflect consumers' or clients' understandings and expectations of quality care, continence care, for people living in long-term care. Prior methods to elicit this type of information have typically used, um, have involved fixed response options that don't provide contextual uh, information to explicate the responses. So given this and the ongoing concerns about quality of continence care in long-term care and the high rates of incontinence, we were interested in exploring cultural values, beliefs, and expectations about quality care, conscience care for people in long-term care. So that was the aim of the study, essentially, to explore the, uh, the different groups of uh, people, residents, family members, long-term care staff, and conscience practitioners' beliefs, opinions, understandings, expectations, and experiences about quality continence care in long-term care. Because of the question, um, we decided the best approach to answer it was to use uh, qualitative research. Uh, so it was conducted as a naturalistic inquiry using qualitative exploratory descriptive research. Now, natural, um, naturalistic inquiry is a form of interpretive or non-experimental research. And it's underpinned by an epistemology that focuses on social constructions of reality, or sense-making, or meaning-making. Um, it embraces the view that there are multiple constructed realities rather than one objective uh, 
fixed, stable truth. And this type of research methodology has a long history within the natural sciences, the social sciences and humanities, and it dates back to the 1920s. The participants, therefore, so the methods are quite different from experimental research, and so we had a non-probability sample of four long-term care stakeholder groups. It was conducted in Australia. Uh, we had multiple methods to recruit people, so we placed advertisements in um, newsletters that went out to the aged care sector, and uh, we conducted information sessions at long-term care facilities, and we employed a snowballing technique as well. So the interviews were, with the residents themselves, the interviews were face-to-face, -face, and for the other participants it, it was by phone, and the, um, they were uh, 20 to 40 minutes of a one-off conversation or interview. So uh, we asked them about their beliefs, opinions, understanding, expectations and experiences about quality continence care, so it was a very open-ended interview. The analysis was, analysis was undertaken using inductive content and thematic strategies to build constructions of quality continence care for each stakeholder group. Uh, so we had two, two researchers who independently read the transcripts and then coded it uh, independently and, and categorised it. So we, from that we developed a coding matrix um, in which a researcher assigned one or more codes or labels to describe the text. And so this was an iterative process that we continued um, until we were able to delimit the number of codes to ensure consistency and fit. Thereafter, we met as a team and compared the codes uh, until a reach, um, agreement was reached. So this is the sample. Unfortunately, we were uh, very limited in being able to recruit residents, so the sample size is two. And uh, so all I can say about that group is that uh, the data suggested from them that there was an overall acceptance of incontinence, incontinence, which was part and parcel of their acceptance of their situation and adjustment to being in a long-term care context of being care dependent. Uh, the other participants included family members of uh, residents, long-term care staff, there were 21 people, and they included managers, registered nurses, Division I, uh, which is three years of education typically, enrolled nurses, which uh, have two years of education at a vocational training centre, uh, the equivalent of an LPN in the States, and personal care attendants, which is the equivalent of a certified nursing assistant in the States. And, they, they represent the main workforce in Australia, so they uh, comprise 70%, and there were two allied health staff, and we also interviewed continence practitioners who were continence nurses who had experience in um, consulting to or providing education in aged care, in long-term care. So collectively, the sample came from four out of six states of Australia. So if we look firstly at a family members' um, opinions about quality continence care. Essentially, uh, the, the main finding here is that family members' uh, beliefs were linked to their beliefs about practices that they thought could dignify residents. So dignity was a really important construct for these family members. And so these were the sorts of practices that they thought would dignify their, uh, a resident. So they placed a high value on residents feeling dry and comfortable in having residents' needs responded to, rec recognised first, uh, and then responded to in a timely and sensitive manner, including uh, assistance to use the toilet. And being cared for by staff who conveyed compassion and empathy and didn't embarrass them in the context of their, the person being incontinent, being offered choice, being spoken to in a calm manner, being covered during continence or personal care, being checked or changed when wet or soiled, having the wet or soiled um, items discarded discreetly, and having their reliance on um, help and conscience products concealed. With long-term <coughs> care uh, staff Excuse interviews... Excuse me, I, I have to ask you to try to go to the conclusion because we are okay. running out of time. Uh, so managers focused on funding disincentives for continence, uh, contextually inappropriate continence assessment forms gaps in education and resources and limited staff knowledge. 
the, uh, they spoke about limited options due to resident characteristics in terms of trying to optimise continence. They described toilet, all staff talked about toileting assistance programs being problematic to implement and sustain in the context of the staffing levels, particularly at night. And, and so there was an overall reliance on absorbent pads and a focus, so for them, values and uh, quality indicators were around selecting the right pad and checking and changing the pad at the right time. For uh, conscious practitioners, uh, they differed in their p opinions depending on whether or not they had experience of working in a facility or whether they had personal experience of a family member in a, in a facility. So the latter group described considerable tension between themselves and long-term staff concerning quality of care issues and having to advocate for their family member that inevitably led to conflict. Uh, continence practitioners who had experience of working in the environment described having to modify their expectations of continence and uh, that as far as they were concerned, they thought that incontinence was accepted so long as it was contained. The, uh, for them, quality indicators for continence was a reduction in the number and size of pads and an increase in the frequency of toileting. So in conclusion, um, these family members and staff prioritised containment of incontinence and uh, they prioritised... So, so therefore, practices uh, that they thought would dignify people would be around protecting people from visible, contained, uncontaining continence, uh, privacy, making residents feel comfortable, and on the interpersonal skills of staff when providing continence care. So the finding raises a couple of questions. Firstly, it's around uh, what we've been debating within the ICS about the most appropriate goal of care for continence, uh, for people living in long-term care who are incontinent or who are dependent on another person for help with continence. And secondly, you know, what does it take for us as an organisation to bridge the gap between research and practice in long-term care? to facilitate the uptake of, of interventions that do work. And I would suggest that the, these findings suggest that we could start with the concept that's uh, commonly shared by all people, which is the concept of dignity. Thank you. Thank you. So the abstract is open for questions. In the meanwhile, that someone may have a question. We don't have much time, actually, for questions. Uh, so uh, uh, if I can ask you to give, uh, I mean, a final message from this uh, uh, paper. Um, we shouldn't, uh, I mean, over-treat, I mean, this patient. Is this the, 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 message, the message you want to give? But my comment is, uh, is it possible to give such a message if we have asked only two residents, actually, in, in, in this paper? Yes, I, think, I mean, ideally, this information should come from residents themselves. So I think that going forward, we need to be uh, really doing further work with residents themselves. But given that the problem, the um, interventions rely on long-term care staff to implement and the residents themselves often are very care dependent and cognitively impaired. So really our interventions need to be targeted to the long-term care staff. Now if they already uh, have values around dignity, and, and clearly they do because they spend a lot of time in cleaning and containing incontinence, and they speak a lot about dignity and care. So I think that's a really good starting point. So uh, what I'm suggesting is the focus for interventions needs to be broader than, than medical interventions. And, and work inductively with what staff already understand.